Moral Podcast. I am your host, Matt Lieb. Uh, so excited to take you through the latest and greatest of Israeli propaganda. We're talking about memes. We're talking about video content. We're talking about uh, uh, people deciding that women with purple hair are somehow an avatar for Hamas. We're talking about all that good stuff. And I thank you for joining us. Uh, just want to remind you to give us five stars and a review on all of the, uh, you know, podcast apps that you may or may not have. Apple Podcast Store, uh, you can do it there. You can do it on Spotify. Also, if you're watching this, um, instead of merely listening, uh, I thank you. Um, but just a reminder, um, all of this content on YouTube is uh, essentially non-monetizable. Uh, not only because I use copyrighted material, but uh, because I say, like, fuck a lot and stuff. But apparently, you're, you're not allowed to do that, apparently. Um, you know, there's, like, there's all sorts of rules and stuff like that. And um, so, yeah, if you're like, hey, you know, I like this podcast and I must watch it. Um, cool. That's fine. But maybe uh, consider, you know, um, doing one of them super, super chat things or whatever. He's like, you can give me a dollar and be like, good show. I love that. I love dollars. Um, also, feel free to go to patreon.com slash broadcast. You will get this show as long as, as well as a bunch of other shows. And uh, you'll, you'll be able to hear them all ad free, which is nice. Today, our guest. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, our guest. Back by popular demand, one of the greatest guests in the history of of Bad Has Barra, a podcast which has only happened six times. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, everyone else, our guest today is Daniel Mate. Oh, let me add him to the, how do I? Yeah, there it is. What's up? Oh, wow. you sure bow to popular demand pretty easily. Yeah, no, I mean, honestly, it's not going to take much to take me down. You, right. you know what you're I mean? Like you're, you're 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 training our audience to, that they can just push you around and make they demands can. of you. And this, I feel like this is like this could come back to bite you. I really could. You know, usually um, I ignore the piggies. I tell the piggies like, eat your slop, enjoy your slop. You know, you don't get to tell well, the farmer what kind of slop you're getting. You know what I mean? Because deep, deep down, they're in it for the shame and the humiliation. You gotta. I you mean, know. of course, you got to talk to them that way. Yeah, that is why you listen to podcasts. You listen to podcasts because you are an oinking little hog and you just want to <laughs> stick your nose in the content trough and go num, 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 num. Um, and we're, I want to point out to any of my new audience who's like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, I consider everyone a piggy. I'm a piggy, but I'm a piggy for like The Wire, you know, or for The Sopranos. Um, you know, like we, we're all piggies for our content slop, but I'm just saying, um, usually I, I don't, I, you know, I say, Hey, you know, eat the slop in this case, their preferences for slop and my preferences aligned. I was like, of oh. course I would love to have Daniel back. Daniel is uh, one of my favorite people. And, uh, you know, he is uh, one of the few people who has ever graced the inside of the Lieb Fiorentini studio here in los angeles so of course i would have you back i yeah. achieved full penetration i achieved full penetration i'm not sure if it's gonna <laughs> feel quite the same with this level of i know graphic protection between us you know i know i thought the same thing i was like uh you know it's just like this is just such a thick condom you know i but, mean we're talking you know what? Th thousands of miles. there's more imagination to it we can we can fill yeah in the that's blanks. true exactly it's great to this be is... back thank you for having me matt this is such a nice surprise to be asked back so soon it oh, was yeah. absolutely my favorite media hit, if that's a term that people that's use. A, I think that is a term. Yeah, when they do way too much media uh, mm -hmm. that I've done. And uh, so it's just oh. uh, it's just a delight to be back in your space today, virtually or not. Oh, I love it. I'm, I'm glad you're back. I'm glad you're here. 
uh, you know, we uh, we had a great time talking about stuff uh, last time, and this time I expect no different. Although this time, because we are in two separate rooms, I imagine I will have a chance to play some of uh, my favorite Israeli Hasbara. So, <sighs> you know, I hope you're excited because this is, uh, th- you know, I've been listen. I do research, and by do research, I uh, I just surf. Twitter and Instagram for hours on end, um, just hoping to see something that makes me feel again. I don't know. Yeah, if you well, I, I can, I, I can tell, I can tell by the palpating in my colon that I must be excited. <laughs> yeah, you can feel the pulsating uh, sphincter. You're just like, ooh, wow. Why just, am I? Wow, that mm. anticipation of what I'm in for. I the yeah, open I, wide, I but a, yeah. <laughs> Uh, today we're yeah. going to be talking about all sorts of stuff. I want to start out with, um, you know, Daniel, you and I are, um, people who enjoy making some like little, little funny videos online, you know, talking about Palestine, sure. talking about keeping it light, keeping it light, you know, um, then, and, and trying to, you know, bring awareness to the fact that, uh, Israel is currently doing a genocide in Gaza. Um, mm-hmm. but did you know that there are also uh comedians out there who are doing the same thing but uh are doing it in favor of the current genocide that is going on are you perhaps speaking about and we have not prepared this at all i have no idea we're going to blame you but are you perhaps speaking about to me about the middle east's finest sketch comedy program eretz (laughs) nehederet i i mean that is half of what i'm talking about absolutely i mean that that actually uh, very much relates to this, um, but I, I'm I'm looking at an American version of this. Um, I'm speaking oh. of a TikTok uh, superstar named uh, Daniel Ryan Spaulding, who uh, I had not heard of until uh, you know recent events. And I'm sorry, uh, Ryan Ryan Spaulding, Daniel Ryan Spaulding. Uh, oh, Daniel I... <laughs> Ryan Spaulding. I thought you were talking about. It sounded like some kind of obscure and very non-Jewish Austrian dessert <laughs> wine, like Ryan Spaulding. <laughs> it's a Ryan Spaulding. Mm, mm, I think it's a thirty-three. Um, yeah, no, <laughs> that was a, that was a very good year for the great Rhine. year. <laughs> yeah, we love so that many year. wonderful, so many wonderful flavors tossed in it. Mm-hmm. Yes, a lot of uh, I just have a, a lot of nostalgia for that year. I don't really know why, but this Rhine Spalding I drink it's a, tastes a little bloody. Uh, no, but this is a uh, comedian um, who I had not heard of before, and uh, he did uh, he he does like I don't know how uh, you would categorize it, but I would say um, he calls himself a power gay, which cool. Um, and he does kind of like sort of similar to you. He's kind of like the bizarro world you in terms of he does walk and talk videos. Um, but they are, um, well, let me just, uh, let me just introduce you to him. He's, uh, an interesting guy. So let's, let's you have, start. You, you have my attention if he's stealing, yeah. stealing my gimmick. Yes. Yes. But, uh, he's making it fabulous. Boshing is a term that angry, jealous, purple-haired girls like to throw around anytime fabulous gay guys get along with Jews. Call me crazy, but I'd rather be at a circuit party in Tel Aviv getting head than in the Gaza Strip getting beheaded. I love my Jewish friends, and I love my Israeli friends, and I'm going to remind them of that every single day, and there's not one goddamn thing you can do about it. You're in the streets ripping down posters of kidnapping. I'm sorry. Can we start with um, no one's trying to do anything about that? You can tell you can tell your Jewish friends and your Israeli friends you love them all day. No yeah. one is stopping you from doing it. Girl, girl, it's it's giving protesting too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not protesting, yeah. protesting too much. You mean, you know, it's yeah, funny when yeah. you say pro when you say protesting, mm. it sounds like being out in the street with signs. When you say protesting, it sounds like the way. Shakespeare yeah. meant it. Isn't yeah, it? Isn't yeah, it yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, that's the beautiful thing about the English language. Jewish it's babies and your little yeah. Yasser Arafat scarves doing your little... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> yes, he puts the yas in Yasser Arafat. 
<laughs> he did. He did. Yeah, sir. Arafat. That's amazing. <laughs> Jane Cosplay. I'm a gay guy. I know that if I'm going down, I'm going down with the Jews. That's how it oh. works. First they come for the Jews, then they come for the gays. That's not how it works. That is not how that poem works literally at all. But go ahead. Right. Wouldn't the joke be, I'm a gay guy, so I know if I'm going down, I'm going down on the Jews. Yeah, that's. I, part of me was like, I think he, was, he meant that, um, but yeah. uh, decided... Uh, to instead make a a worse point which is that Mr. i know that Mr. the only reason yeah. that i'm <laughs> standing with the jews is because the gays are next and oh, right. uh, f fair enough sure well memo to mr M memo to ms ryan spalding don't don't <laughs> let a couple of straight ashkenazi jewish guys out sass you yes yes please don't <laughs> They had the Star of David, we had the pink triangle. But that doesn't mm -hmm. matter to you purple-haired Hamas lovers, does it? Because you're not actually gay. Something tells me if they started targeting my people, your purple hair would turn brown pretty fucking fast. Oh man, there's just, so he's, um, I mean, listen, he's doing a lot here. He's doing a lot. One of the things he's doing yeah. um, is yeah. uh, saying you're not actually gay, which I assume he, that feels like a specific gripe. <laughs> like he knows a purple, I think he knows a purple haired girl who yelled at him once. That's what it feels yeah, like. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe he's just taking Biden's cue, like you ain't black. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely going in that same direction, which uh, yeah. is, I, I mean, we can all be honest, that, that, that is only like three degrees away from a full turf pivot, you know? Like yeah. this person well, is very soon gonna be like also trans are not real yeah mm -hmm. yeah well it's, he's uh, he's mm. certainly he he's certainly um yeah he certainly, uh, he, he could have he he could have done better with that joke with that purple to brown hair joke i feel mm -hmm. like something about like if you were living in gaza you know the blockade would prevent your purple hair color from hair dye in, from and your hair would, would go brown and then you wouldn't be so radical would you yeah or, or yeah you know or he, um he's just uh why do they call it the gaza strip when you can't even go to a strip club you know Let's when you can't it. even take off when you can't even take off your hijab <laughs> yeah you know why i like israelis because i like giving iron dome you know nah. there, we go. there we go they're having a little fun <laughs> you know it's uh, it brings to mind this thing that, and you mentioned the Israeli sketch comedy show, um, like there is this focus that I only have, but previous to uh, Israel, um, you know, making this kind of content, I'd only seen the uh, purple-haired girl's avatar for all things we hate from like the Babylon Bee, you know what I mean? Right. Like that that was their main avatar. Like let's get a you know, uh, a bisexual, we need to hate uh, women and gays at the same time and That's college right, yeah. students and anyone yeah. who, you know, it, it seems vaguely Marxist. Um, yeah. so they just have this purple haired girl and, um, it is something that he continues doing with a, um, just a delightful video he made on TikTok recently. Uh, in which he is talking to himself. And he is an apartheid state. Hi, I'm Mr. Daniel, and this oh, is my friend, this. the purple hair yeah. girl. She's not a bad person, but she's been radicalized to become a raging Jew hater, and we want to help her. I don't need your Zionist help. I just want to free Palestine from Israeli apartheid. Do you know what apartheid means, purple hair girl? Yeah. It means two different sets of laws for different races. That's right, purple hair girl, but Israel doesn't have apartheid. 20% of Israel is Arab, Muslim, and Christian, and they have full equal rights of citizenship. Mm -hmm. They can vote, hold office in the Supreme Court, own land, mm -hmm. every right a Jewish citizen has. There's also wow. Druze people and Bedouins. They're Israeli too, with full rights of citizenship. Israel is a multicultural I love, can society. Can you pause it for a second? <laughs> yes. So a couple of things. I love that when he drops the sort of sassy queen thing, you can just see 
how miserable he is. Like when yeah. he drops the, the big eyes and the smile. Yeah. Like when he's just giving the facts, he's really, really not happy. Like he's no, no. This, yeah. is, this is like a burden for him to like have to carry this out. A hundred percent. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's it's funny because you don't you rarely see uh this much of a change in character. Like this is supposed to be like a sarcastic guy, whereas before it was uh what he's described as a power gay, you know, just walking fucking, you know, like like he's walking down a runway just spouting Israeli propaganda. No, no, he's like the token he's like the token gay hire at Hasbara Inc. And he yeah. like doesn't have a <laughs> He has a shitty or doesn't even have a corner office and doesn't no. even get to write his own material. Like some straight guy wrote this for him. And it's like, he, he and it, this, he's like, he's like Randy rainbow after some kind after yeah. birthright. Like, <laughs> he is. Yes. You know? Yeah. He's like a radicalized Randy rainbow, <laughs> but he's not, but he's also not Jewish. So he doesn't get to be, he, he was, yeah. like, he got, he was, he was the gay Christian guy who got to tag along on birthright. So, mm -hmm. and, and it was, and it was like, a pretty homophobic space probably yeah so yeah oh yeah yeah he yeah, had a yeah. miserable time but now he's like contracted to yeah you know. well i mean you know it's uh when you get that uh sweet sweet content engagement it, you know we've all admitted it's it's hard not to love it it's a hard not not to feel you know that uh that oxytocin hit once uh once you once you get that like but there is a bit of like when I, when I see it with this kind of content, I'm always just like, this is um, like, like money went into this. You know what yeah. I mean? So uh, I'm that, always that, that 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 sweater vest at the very least, or that cardigan. Oh yeah, oh yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, look, that is an ex that, you can tell. It's got a. That's at least what seventy five dollars used. Oh, at least that is yeah, not even. I mean, like, and he doesn't get to. And he doesn't days. get to. Yeah, and he doesn't even get to keep it. He he can't take that home. No, Wardrobe will tell him, fuck off. We're keeping it for the next <laughs> sassy gay Zionist video. Yeah, exactly. I mean the Palestinians in Gaza. Well, purple hair girl, Israel can't Israel give can't them give rights them because rights. they don't live. Yeah, they don't yeah. live in Israel. Yeah, yeah. That's imp it would be impossible. What I uh, what I love about this argument, I mean, you know, and if for anyone who already knows this, forgive me for um you know telling you what you already know but just the idea that uh we're now uh at the i mean listen at this stage in hasbara they have to have something new and they don't it's the same shit i've heard my whole life which is like no but gaza is, is its own state <laughs> you know the west bank they have a government there israel can't we just left, yeah we, we left, left right. gaza in 2005 Yes, yes, the same burned, fucking bullshit. They burned, they burned the greenhouses. They totally misdecorated the place. They just made oh, yeah. it hide hideous. Yeah, they. What yeah, can first you do with all, these people? You try yeah, to make they don't even know about feng shui. <laughs> In Israel, it's like saying, "Why doesn't the U.S. give Mexicans rights?" It's because yeah. they don't live in the U.S. Mm. Israel withdrew completely from Gaza in 2005, even evicting Jewish Israelis from their homes. So mm -hmm. Palestinians in Gaza. Mm -hmm. Let's just, can I just read you a little something here? Please. So they love to say this about how Israel withdrew completely in 2005. They gave them mm -hmm. full sovereignty. It's complete and total horseshit. Um, number one, it's true that they removed, I think, 8,000 Jewish settlers from Gaza, and they proceeded to install 12,000 new ones in the West Bank. And it was completely understood that this was a redeployment, not really a withdrawal. Mm -hmm. um, here, here is a quote from a book by an Israeli historian and an Israeli journalist, Edith uh, Zertal and Akiva Eldar, respectively. Mm -hmm. They have a book called Lords of the Land, and they wrote that Israel's 2005 disengagement from Gaza did not, quote, release Gaza for even a single day from Israel's military grip or from the price of the occupation that its inhabitants pay every day, end quote. When it removed its settlers in Gaza, quote, Israel left behind scorched earth, devastated services, and people with neither a present nor a future. The settlements were destroyed in an ungenerous move by an unenlightened occupier, which, in fact, continues to control the territory and kill and harass its inhabitants by means of its formidable military might. And that, Mr. Reinspalding, is called effective control, which is, it amounts to the same thing 
as military occupation in, in, under mm -hmm. international law. You can occupy a land by having your people in it, or you can occupy the concentration camp from the outside. Still, mm -hmm. you control the borders, you control who gets in, you control who gets out, you control what gets in and gets out from everything from chocolate to potato chips to baby chickens, which Israel outlawed at various times. You control the flow of food to the point where Israel was calculating the daily number of calories that Palestinians could just subsist on. That's right. You control the airspace because you bombed the airport, you control the waterways, you control everything. And that, my friend, is not analogous as, as much power as the U.S. does wield over Mexico. That's not at all analogous to the U.S. granting Mexicans rights or something, because Mexico is a state and its, state, mm -hmm. its citizens have ostensibly the right to be free and to vote in their own government. Um, so these analogies uh, for the purple-haired girl fall apart on immediate impact. And I would love to get the purple girl in a room so just let her know she's not crazy i she's know just a badly a badly written badly played character by the same asshole i know i really want to like take purple haired girl aside and be like you're actually you're doing great you know i i i understand that you're currently um the body that you're inhabiting right now um is that of uh an ignorant zionist sociopath but i want you to know keep going Keep reading, keep, going. keep doing, <laughs> keep doing everything that you're doing because uh, don't don't let this guy, you know, who is you, ninety percent of the time. Don't don't let him take over. You're doing yeah, great. And eventually, one, one day, you know, the marionette will kill the puppeteer. You kill your master. That's right. You, you, she'll achieve That's... full sentience. <laughs> she'll be a free floating phantasm <laughs> when she'll she'll develop a moral conscience, and actually defeat defeat the bad sketch artist, TikTok artist that created her. Oh, I love that. Oh, yes. You know, I would say it's, you know, it's uh, Mr. Hyde defeating Jekyll, but I kind of feel like, I mean, maybe I need to actually read that book to know whether or not Hyde was actually, like, based. Like, was, was Hyde actually the good guy and Dr. Jekyll the been. bad guy? Yeah, I haven't read it either. I have it in my car, but I still haven't read it. <laughs> um, it looks like Mr. Reinsbalding is in... Um, is in Brooklyn, like me. So maybe him and I could do a walk and talk together sometimes. That would be I, fabulous. They're leaders of I, Ford. I would, I would love to watch you guys walk and talk at the same time. If you ever catch him on the street making videos, you need to start walking next to him and just doing the exact same thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Sashay, sashay with Daniel. Yes. Um, but everybody says that it's apartheid. No, hold That's on. Don't listen to it. Propaganda by a terrorist organization called Hamas. It's called the UN, Hamas. called Amnesty International, yeah. called Human Rights Watch, called Bet Salem. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, yeah, that the Israeli, is. <laughs> the Israeli Human Rights Organization, Bet Salem, that, is, that has recently put out a report, I think 2018. That's that right. Called Israel's Dominion over both 48. Israel mm -hmm. and occupied Palestine, the West Bank and Gaza, a Jewish supremacy from the river to the sea. Yes. 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 Uh, just like that is Hamas propaganda just rings so hollow at this point because it's like, how many more human rights organizations do you need? It's like uh, on one side, you have every human uh, major human rights organization uh, and inside Israel and outside of Israel. Um, and on the other side, you have what? Israel's PR department and the state department and, and like the, you know, uh, whoever's handling Middle East diplomacy in Western nations. So those are the only no. people no, 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 who no, are no. like, don't, yeah, no, Israel's don't, right. <laughs> don't forget Micronesia, Palau, the Marshall Islands, all the tiny Pacific Island nations that are the only ones who vote with, the U.S. and Israel every year to block a two-state settlement since the 1970s. Oh man, I love I, I love that because it's just like you know, it, it's it, it just all this keeps reminding me of the uh, Iraq War when we had like the Coalition of the Willing and it was just like you know states that were like oh yeah 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 I forgot about Palau, uh, you know <laughs> it, I know I know it's in the ocean somewhere, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah no it's just. Uh, <sighs> yeah it is do you think do you think there's a zionist podcast called bad hamas Barah? 
Oh, there should be. I would love to see our, you know, our evil twins. I guess it would be <laughs> us without our circle beards. <laughs> yeah, know. that's right. Yeah. yeah. They would be completely clean shaven and they would just exactly. play videos of me and you and uh, laugh because they are funny. That uses people's lack of knowledge and anti Semitic biases to spread misinformation. They wouldn't lie to me. Hamas would lie to you. They'd also gang rape you, behead you, burn you Ooh. alive, mutilate and rape your dead body, and film it all, and live stream it on Facebook to your family, because Hamas is a psychotic death cult that oppresses Israelis and Palestinians. I'm purple. <laughs> Oof, wow. That was so the punchline. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I'll be honest. I never got to the ending. The, that's that's quite a that's quite a capper. I'm purple, ha ha ha. Yeah, yeah. I'm purple, ha ha ha. I've never gotten to the end of that. Didn't know it ended with I'm purple, ha ha ha. Which is uh, it's funny that that's like uh, an ironic thing. Because it literally, you that you wrote it. You made her purple. You can't just be like, yeah. look at this idiot. You're the idiot. You. He wrote the fucking sketch. Yeah, well, I mean, Ugh. basically, he's, sum he's summing up. That's the extent of the joke. Like, yeah, like that he's is confessing the that that's, the whole thing. that's really all he has on her. And yeah. and she's a woman, and the misogyny is very clearly very strong there. The sort of oh yeah, oh, aggressive. Yeah. You know, there's a particular you know, strain. There's this particular strain of white gay male misogyny that I've exactly seen a lot in the musical theater say. world. Oh I, yeah, I'm in musical theater. I write musicals. Which is not to say that there isn't a long, a large strain of white straight male misogyny, which of course. Oh yeah, is. yeah, oh, yeah. But, but I mean, we invented it probably, but yeah. but 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 it's very strong in this video. This kind of like wanting to inhabit this, like I don't know, wanting to do the drag thing, but just really kind of despising the character you're playing yeah. and having no in, no having no insight into it. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, I you know like this hateful version um of women that i think you know uh is displayed by a lot of like uh your w white male gay men uh in and this is like the zionist version of that where you just see someone mm -hmm. who's just like i don't see completely why your avatar uh like of you know uh, hamas supporting leftists or whatnot is just some woman uh, but i imagine it's the same reason that every single right-wing publication from like daily wire to babylon b to fox news to fucking all of them uh that they do the exact same thing that is who they hate and they are a little less shy about the fact that it's because they find women annoying you know what i mean yeah like they yeah. will just outwardly admit their misogyny whereas he probably thinks he's good which is one of the reasons that Nothing pisses me off more than liberal Zionism. You know, listen, at least um, hard right Zionists um, know they're bad. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I don't exactly get liberal vibes from him. I mean, he could very well be a gay Republican for all I know. He, he I mean, he, he comes off as a gay Republican, but uh, I, if, if yeah. I had to guess, I would say um, very much so, uh, you know, he is holds himself as if not a liberal um but uh, may, someone who is just like a uh a, a centrist realist who is you know yeah uh, with progressive human correct yeah he's a pragmatic progressive or something like yeah that. was like happy a about pragmatic gay, gay marriage getting passed and is mad that trans people are now taking the mic <laughs> you know it's i got mine specific. Jack. yeah i got mine you are done um, yeah, so listen, shout out to, um, you know, Mr. Ryan Spaulding here. Um, I will say that I, I, I went back into his, um, history and, uh, found a little bit of an origin story, um, as to why this, um, cause like before this, he was just doing, you know, like walk and talk videos. He, he, uh, had a big weight loss journey, which I think is great. Good for him. Mm -hmm. Um, and all that. And then now he just makes these like, I'm gay and not Jewish and love Israel. Um, but, uh, 
this is this is what I found as to why that's Woke the case. 20 somethings who don't actually give a shit about anyone but themselves. I gained 12,000 Instagram followers overnight, and all I had to do was say that Hamas terrorism is wrong. I mean, if you want to know <laughs> the reasons for making that kind of pivot, that's one of them. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Is he being, yeah, that, is he actually, is actually confessing that he just did that in a craven way or is he? I mean, I, I believe he is trying to recruit others to do the same thing. Um, and he's right. also somewhat bragging like, oh, you're going to hate Israel. Well, guess what? You're missing out on the followers, which uh, I will say shout out to anyone online who posts and reposts um, like anything that is pro-palestinian because all y'all are the true heroes who make it possible to uh look at that video and go like you know you also you do get love for being someone with a conscience uh who loves palestine so thank you yeah i mean i i don't like thinking of it in these terms but it's just a fact that in these past three months mm -hmm. uh you know there there's a big Part of, I mean, there's room. The world is wide enough to quote a song from Hamilton, which I'm sure he loves. The world is wide <laughs> enough for Hamilton know, and Zion, Z <laughs> cowardly, co exactly cowardly Zionist genocide deniers mm -hmm. and fine upstanding, you know, Jews like you and me holding up the best of our tradition That's and right. Palestinians who are finally getting a voice in mm -hmm. the discourse to all have a piece of the follower pie, and mm -hmm. um, you know. None of it matters because 25,000 people have died and Israel has gone entirely insane. But if you want to play the follower game, okay, do you. I know, I know. It's just like, uh, you know, it, it's there's a shamelessness to starting your video out that way. And, I, you know, he did it pretty early on. Um, so I, I, I like to imagine um, that at this point, if he were to rewatch that video, he'd be like, maybe I shouldn't start off with I did this for clout. <laughs> You know? Well, this is the th this is the thing, though. It's like when 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 wonderful uh, comedic traditions get bastardized for the for power centers, yeah. they become quite quite sinister. So oh, camp, yeah. right? Camp is actually a very subversive style of comedy. I remember yeah. when I saw Hedwig and the, Hedwig and the Angry Inch, which mm -hmm. is one of my favorite musicals. I saw it off Broadway in the late '90s, and I didn't expect to like it because I was like, "Well, I'm not gay." I've never had a sex change operation. I'm not East German. Uh, you know, all of the identity categories of this character, right? Right. And this was sort of in the years before transgender discourse, what it was, was what it was now. So the whole premise of the show was German boy has a botched sex change operation, ends up German girl in, in America, out of place and all this kind of stuff. But I found myself weeping and laughing and relating to it so much mm -hmm. because the camp of it was this lacerating wit that cut through hypocrisies and also cut through pain, personal pain. And it had vulnerability to it, but there was this barbed edge of self-protection, but yeah. so much self-loathing in the mix. And of course, as an Ashkenazi Jew, I completely agree with that and being betwixt in between and all of that. So this persona that, you know, gay performers and writers and artists have have developed and it's not a persona it's a whole genre it's a whole world it's a whole ontology has so much written richness to it and it's so humanizing but then you take the surface elements of it which is just sibilant s's like certain kinds of snaps and like head movements mm -hmm. and like a certain kind of like crude sarcasm where you just mean the opposite of what you say or you mean exactly what you say but you're just saying it in this tone and yeah. all of a sudden you've you've lost the the spark of humanity in it and now it's just a new flavor of fascism it's fucked yeah. up yeah yeah and you know at the end of the day like uh any of the reservations you had about not enjoying something end up being correct because bad art is bad art um you know i will say of course you know it is more more sinister to have uh bad art for uh speaking out um in favor of fascism but, uh, you know, even if it's just, you know, uh, completely apolitical, not or, funny. Or, 
or worse if it has the great politics but it's not funny and it's bad oh, i hate that shit that bad social part. justice bad social justice art it's oh, tough i know i know it it's it's uh you know i uh i support the the message but uh i'm always just like just make it funny please <laughs> yeah <laughs> make, it's like I just, <laughs> try where's um, the craft you know exactly uh <clears throat> i uh well, we're, you and i are old school esthetes you know we're old souls we're not right. like these kids these purple haired kids these days not these purple haired kids these days with their woke <laughs> mind virus and trying to yeah um i want to um uh pivot real quick to uh talking about um one of the uh you know biggest distributors of uh hasbara um that's uh, Israel's Twitter account. Uh, Daniel, do you uh, know they have a Twitter account? I do. She's so cute. She's a 14-year-old girl. <laughs> and she's, like, really not having it, you guys. Like, she's really, like, she can't. Yeah. Like, she can't with, with this yeah, fundamentally. Yeah, 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 exactly. She is, she literally can't. And um, big yikes. But... <laughs> Yeah, it, it is. Uh, it is this. Uh, it's interesting because it it, it kind of goes back and forth between like um, you know uh, news news clips of you know whoever their uh, you know favorite Hasbarist is um, you know talking to meet the press or whatever, and like some funny video like that like that sketch comedy show. Um, but uh, I wanted to. Uh, talk about actually this is this is what i want to talk about um i want to talk about bringing them home this mm. is uh this is something that uh i you know if you're anywhere in this world um and you have at any point criticized um israel or at any point said that you would like them to not um do a genocide you will be inundated with people who go like what about the hostages? Bring them home. Bring them home. Um, it has been a uh, <clears throat> hundred days, and um, at this point, I don't know how it's possible for anyone who still says this to not feel deep shame and self-loathing. Um, the only people at this point who are actually working towards freeing the hostages are people who are in the streets screaming for a ceasefire the and only the families people, of the hostages and the and families, the families of, of the hostages that's right going and to the, going to the knesset and pleading with them to stop the madness yes and it is just to constantly see even now even today the bring them home meme uh or hashtag being utilized by people in response to literally every single criticism, no matter how great or small, um, of how they're conducting their operations in Gaza. Um, it's just like, it's sickening to a degree in which it almost feels like mocking. It almost feels like yeah. mocking, not, not of the thousands of dead Gazans, but of the literal families of victims of the Hamas terror attack that happened on the seventh. Like these are people who want their family members back. They want them yep. home. And yep. as of today, I believe only, uh, and I'll, I'll have to, to check to make sure to see if maybe it's been updated. Um, but last I checked only one, one hostage was rescued in an operation by the IDF one. That's right. That's right. That is it. And, yeah. It's uh, not exactly in te in, in Tebe, is it? No, it's not. It's it really isn't. And and you know, it's funny when you search uh, IDF uh, hostage rescue. You know, trying to find like, let me get this number here because this is ostensibly the reason they went into Gaza. This is the reason for all of this. Um, uh, you just find articles about in Tebe over and over again. You just <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, now. I want to know now what is happening. Is there, do they have some fucking, you know, are the special forces going in there and freeing people? One, 
only one so far. Uh, well, no, they, meanwhile, they, they, they actually no, they they definitely liberated three of them from this mortal coil. <laughs> from this mortal coil, yes, they've murdered. Uh, I think at this point five. They've admitted to five hostages who were killed by Israel. Um, you know, we of course we know of the three, uh, the the big ones, just the ones who literally um, escaped their captors. Uh, had banners that said, please, you know, uh, help us. We are Israeli. Had their hands up and were still summarily well, at least they were waving. At least they were waving white flags and they had their shirts off. So they weren't wearing suicide vests. And then, there's, That's there, right. of course, there's how, however many hostages have been killed in the rubble. I mean, you talk yes. about, you know, Netanyahu put out a tweet about murder tunnels. Well, OK, your hostages are being held in tunnels throughout this densely populated area. And you are you know, dropping seismic levels of explosives and just obliterating everything. Um, that's a great rescue operation. Yeah. And meanwhile, and, and... you're not, you're not negotiating. Like, hasn't, hasn't, haven't these people seen a hostage movie? Have you not right. seen Glenn? Uh, sorry. I was going to say Glenn Gary, Glenn, Glenn Ross, Gary, no, Glenn dog Glenn day <laughs> afternoon, not dog day afternoon. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's a different movie. You stupid fucking cunt. <laughs> you stupid. But <laughs> you see this watch. Whoever told you that you could work with men? You see this watch? <laughs> oh yeah, but yeah, no. I'm going it's... to Lemkin. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but no. But Dog Day Afternoon and Die Hard, hostages, even the most psychotic, deranged ones, want something. That, yes. That's what the hostages are for. It's leverage, which yes. means you either play ball. Mm -hmm. and negotiate and it turns out israel has to has what to negotiate in the form of palestinian hostages in their yes. torture dungeons thousands of them including women and children kidnapped nabbed from their beds with no charge administrative detention held for six months renewable at a time right so you yeah. either do that or you deal with not doing that right Right. That's, you don't that, pretend that you're you don't doing pretend it that you're doing you... it by the mass bombing of Gaza. You don't pretend that oh, that's what we're doing, and and that that I think is the most uh, like sickening part of this is you know at at some point I think I just kind of assumed that they would um, drop the hostages pretext. Because, you yeah. know, you can't, like you said, you can't be like, they're holding our hostages in these tunnels, you know, and then cut to a video of them doing this mass explosion of a tunnel underground in Gaza, um, allegedly, and then just be like, so you don't give a shit. You're actively you got your soldiers, putting... <laughs> you got your soldiers dancing the horror singing, nothing will be alive under the ground. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they got nothing translators the there just chanting yeah. it back to them in english just in case you missed it american sign language interpreters <laughs> it's in every language but yeah man it, it, yeah at, at this point um uh the vast 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 majority i believe um upwards of 130 um hostages who have been released um have been released uh due to hostage exchange from ceasefires that they had a ceasefire is how you bring them home if you if you care about bringing them home then that's what you do and and, and just the idea that anyone is still out there to this day i mean if you look at fucking um israel's you know uh twitter page like their fucking masthead is bring them home it's just, <clears throat> it's still that yeah it's I'm still they that. I'm surprised they haven't done a Les Mis style video with the song Bring Him Home. It's embarrassing, but a, a lot of people in the Broadway community right after October 7th, and I guess I can understand it in the immediate aftermath, although I cringed as hard as cringe can be because, you know, I'm in that world and I knew that it was sure. going to skew very, very, very Zionist. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but they did a big, you know, they met in up in Times Square and sang Bring Him Home from... Lema is dedicated to the hostages. And by this point, of course, it was already clear what was either happening or going to happen. And they, you know, took yeah. a side and they, and they sided like with the Russia Ukraine war, of course, you just side with whichever side our official enemy is mm -hmm. uh, against the side yeah. that our friends are with. 
and um, it and and we and we weep tears and we really mean it. You know, we're singing this this musical theater anthem about freedom, but you know, we'd never sing, uh, you know, bring them home about Palestinian prisoners. No, ever. You know, we'd never, yeah. we'd never, we'd never go out and do a version of Rise Up from mm -hmm. fucking Hamilton to be like, you know, when are these colonies going to rise up? You know, right. well, what about these settler colonies going to rise yeah. up? You know, yeah. so it's just, it's like, I've always found musical theater to be such a touchy, I'm sort of getting into my own. No, here, please. I, I, I it, love it, this. It, well, it's just such a, um, it's such a powerful art form because it combines theatrical storytelling drama mm -hmm. with music which means that combined it can achieve some of the most transcendent surreal heightened effects it can communicate things that can't be communicated by mere words alone they say that once a character can no longer speak they sing and once they can no longer just sing they have to dance and that's what can happen in musical theater so that's really yeah. cool and if you have it in the in the hands of real humanist uh writers like uh, Sheldon Harnick and Jerry Bach from Fiddler on the Roof mm -hmm. or Stephen Sondheim, who's a different kind of humanist, you can get into some really beautiful, complicated and lovely um, kind of uh, it, just homages to, to, to what humanity is capable of, the good and the bad. But in the wrong hands, yeah. it's also the most emotionally manipulative potentially fascist art form possible. Yeah. Because again, you're putting <clears throat> words with music and when you yeah. when there's no when there's no clash between the words and the music when it's just a hat on a hat yeah when there's no when there's no complexity and when you're using it then to advance a political agenda of the people who are already in power uh it's an art form that i want to get far away from so i'm it's a yeah. it's a strange thing to be a part of because i love it and i'm very very sensitive to its misuse so yeah i'm surprised that israel hasn't seized on that particular Les Mis song, bring him home. Yeah, to do a, I mean, a stupid it, video of their own. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I had the exact same critique. I think of, um, uh, you know, uh, stand-up comedy when it comes to uh, it's the sure. ability to use it for uh, the sake of fascism. You know, um, mm. and uh, it is, you know, almost worse in a way. Um, not to, you know, denigrate musical theater, but. Uh, you know, it's uh, musical theater has, I think, at this point in you know modern American history, a, probably a, a a smaller reach than now. You know, stand up comics do, and and mm -hmm. so like at the very least, like you know, with regards to fascist uh, musical theater, at least like it's still not as accessible to a general public as like uh, you know a fucking some guy standing in front of a mic doing his fifth special about how a trans person corrected him once and he's never going to forgive her yeah. for doing so. It's not it, it's not a very funny special. I watched it this morning. Oh yeah, see I can't I you know, I I have this thing with Chappelle where, you know, I I remember him as he was, you know. It's like yeah. I I I like to uh you know, just remember killing them softly and Chappelle's show and everything, you know, everything after that, I'm like, nah, that's a different guy. You know, it's yeah. it basically it's the, the a, Paul I've... is dead theory. Um, but for Dave Chappelle, like I like look into Chappelle's pictures. Coming. I'm like, nah, he died in a car accident in 66 and they just replaced his ass. <laughs> I understand. I, I have a bit more leeway for him and I have a, I, I have a slightly different read on, on some of those you know, on the line between provocative, even offensive comedy and bad mm -hmm. fascist comedy. Sure, but sure. The real, but the risk, the risk with someone like him is you just get so lazy. And right. now it's all about you and your controversies. And now you're just recite, you're just higher in your own supply. You're just recycling your fumes. You're just yeah. giving your audience what they think they want. And you're not right. actually, gener you're losing what made you so great in the first place, which is, yeah. Well, he's still got his storytelling ability, but you're losing your insight into anything worth right. worth having insight into. Yeah. I mean, at some point, you know, it's just like, I think what you want to do is do a podcast. I don't think you want, <laughs> this doesn't need to be a special necessarily, but you know, still shout out to him for, uh, he did a show in Boston recently in which he, uh, that's exactly right. Yeah. In which he, uh, yelled at someone, uh, who 
tried to heckle him about, you know, Israel or something. And he said, you know, he stood with the Palestinian people. And so because of that, oh, I'm like, Matt, okay. his, his, no, no, his space Jews joke from a couple of years ago. That's pretty fucking funny. Oh, it's a great Have joke. Have you heard that joke? Oh, yes. That's a I fantastic love that joke. joke. So, no, so here's that, the thing. So that's a case. I watch that's clips. a case where, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll watch the clips. So that's a case where his, I don't give a fuck what anybody says about me. I'm going to just do whatever comes out of my joke book. Yes. You know, it's like you, you take the, the good with the, the the often very bad and very lazy or you don't take it at all it's all good but yeah yeah anyway you're you're saying that stand up comedy when basically when it starts punching down and when it loses its taste for mm -hmm. really taking the piss out of those who deserve to have the piss taken out of them yeah it can be can become it can... another tool for just right yeah. yeah and and i i have the same kind of like a emotional reaction uh that you have to you know what happens with when musical theater is weaponized in that way where i'm just you know i just look at it and i go like ah you know this is um this is it, it's it's almost it's also bad because i think laughs reinforce a worldview sometimes for certain people mm, and that's not right. necessarily what a laugh is and I think that, um, you know, mm. uh, that uh, a laugh is good for your ego, but it doesn't necessarily mean that what you're saying is relatable or correct in any way. You know, this idea, it's funny because yeah. it's true. It's like, that's not a thing. Like, things can be funny because they're also true. But also, there's a lot of false things that are hilarious. There's just uh, well, the, but the, that's just a logical that's just a logical fallacy. You could say that this particular joke is funny because it's true, but that doesn't mean that something is true because it's funny. Right, exactly, exactly. And uh, I think we uh, all, we have now tend to put comedians on a pedestal, and I think we need to remember that um, all of us um, are uh, we are fucking stupid and trash, and you should not at all ever put a comedian on a pedestal. We are all degenerates, and uh, you know, we are all just begging to be liked like children so yeah you know and yeah just and i think let, and, and musical theater reminder. people are begging musical theater people are begging to be told that we're special and talented and yes the thing that bugs me about it is that it's not going to be used for meanness so much as it's going to be used for like communal feeling good about ourselves when it's yeah like, and just not so like self-congratulation is a big thing in musical theater pushing people's buttons to make them feel like they're laugh that like they're crying at the right moments and feeling the right things and so on and so forth and not real and kind of flattering their own self-concept which i mm -hmm. guess is what the two things we're talking about have in common anyway i don't know how we got off on that oh it's fine but... uh i i uh i i enjoy getting into musical theater and i'll be honest with you all right when i finally allowed myself to listen to hamilton i was like this is pretty good the music's good i'm i'm not gonna front like i know i'm supposed no. to be like this sucks it's schoolhouse rock and i'm like no it's kind of some of those songs are fucking bangers though i mean i'm not i'm not trying to you know but like i'm not i'm not trying to be a lib or anything but like can motherfucker just like a cheesy ass song let me Damn, live can a motherfucker just, you know, just be in the room where it fucking happens? Where sometimes? it happens, you know? Oh, wait. Yeah, wait for it. It's a great song. It's 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 got lots of great stuff in it. I went through phases with it. At first, yeah. I wanted to hate it, and then I loved it, and then I saw it, and then I saw it again, and then I started to, like, listen to it closer, and the more and more I listened to it after that, the less I liked it. Yeah. So I feel, like my, I feel like my hate for it is both informed by love of its craft, but it's also well-earned because I've, I, I, I went through that. the whole journey. I yes. didn't skip to the end. I, you know, this is how I feel about Israel. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how I feel. I was very informed. You know, I went through this, you know, uh, initially I loved it. Could do no wrong. Then I, you know, I was like, oh, I don't know about that. Then I went on birthright and I was like, I don't know. Maybe Israel is good. Everyone keeps saying it is. Fucking anyone who goes on birthright <laughs> has the right. <laughs> To hate is, I mean, hundred percent. You did your fucking time. They I did tried. it. They I did, did the thing. Did, I went they, to the thing. He said, "Oh, you don't, you can't know unless you come here." I knew. I came there, and I'm like, "Okay, I know now." Now I know. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Sorry. Speaking of uh, video, um, or uh, speaking of music, uh, we are going to end this podcast with this. Um, <clears throat> and there's a Were chance you show that me this... something from the from the Israeli Twitter, uh, the Twitter account. 
Oh, that's well. Yeah, I mean, the the only thing I I uh, I mostly just wanted to to rant about bring them home, okay. but l I will play this one thing that they posted um, New Year's Eve. So if you want to continue the rest of this podcast, um, go ahead and sign up for the Patreon. Um, or, you know, you can actually listen to it for free wherever you get your podcast. But if you want to watch otherwise, it... Otherwise, we're done here. There's nothing yeah. more to see. Get the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, bye. You know, you got to support. But, you That's know, it. you can support by listening. But if you want to watch, patreon.com slash broadcast. And you can watch it.